Hi there, thanks for joining me today. My name is Damien. Before we get started, can I ask that you like and subscribe to my channel? Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a custom connector. So using the Graph API, I'm going to walk you through how to create an app registration in Azure and then create that custom connector within Power Automate. And what that will then allow me to do is call my bespoke action that I've created and then I can use that time and time again. So without further ado, let's jump into my demonstration. So here I am in Microsoft Teams and uh, the Graph API call that I'm going to use today is going to allow me to post a message into my channel. And so you might be thinking there's already an action that does that. Why would you want to do this? Well, as things stand, the actions that are available for Teams only allow you to post text. I'm actually looking to attach a document. And so whilst exploring the Graph API, I could see that that option was available to me. And uh, I've turned that into my custom connector, which I can then call within my Power Automate Cloudflow. So if I jump onto the Graph Explorer, and uh, you can see I've already uh, jumped onto the particular API call I'm looking to use, which is to send a, a channel message. So when you uh, use the Graph API Explorer, you log in as yourself to your, to your tenant, and uh, you can then use these API calls within this browser window. And uh, you'll note at the top here, we have what's called the endpoint. And within that endpoint, we have a couple of uh, parameters in this particular example. So uh, a team ID and a channel ID. So if I was to go ahead and try and run that query now, nothing would happen. Or in fact, it would return an error message because the API doesn't know where to post that particular message to. Um, I'm going to load up in a second uh, an example, but just one thing to note if you're ever looking for the documentation for these various API calls, you'll see here on the right hand side, there is a, a shortcut link. And if I just go ahead and open that, um, we've now got the details about how this API call works and also some clever little examples. One of the key things is permissions, but I'll jump back onto that later on when we build our app registration. So on that Graph Explorer, I'm gonna go into history and I'm going to load up one that I prepared earlier. So unlike the example that loaded up with the hello world message, I have a message here about here's your latest budget and here's your attachment. And then I have uh, an attachment array here within this uh, JSON body. And that includes a reference to the document. Now, again, you might be wondering how on earth did I know how to create this? Well, it wasn't on the uh, documentation for this particular API, but a bit of digging about, and I was able to find an example here, how to send a message with a file attachment in it. And this is the exact JSON body that I have copied into my example. So if I go ahead and run that query, the thing we're looking for is a 201, which is great, so it's all succeeded. And if I jump back onto my Microsoft Teams, we can see we've now posted my message. Here's the latest budget, and the file is attached. Now, what does this uh, eventual uh, custom connector look like? Well, if I jump into my Power Automate, not that one, this one, here we have an example of my custom action. I've created an action here called post to a channel, and that allow allows me to pass the various parameters like the team ID and the channel ID, as well as the content of that message and the details of that attachment. So I will cover how to use this particular um, bespoke action or custom connector in another video, which I'll hopefully link to shortly once I've produced it. But for now, I'm going to show you how I build this custom connector and therefore this action. Right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go and create our app registration. So you will need someone with uh, permissions to Azure AD. If that's not you, you'll need to go and speak to your global admin or, or someone with that permission. I do have a blog post and that has a link on how this is done if you'd much rather read through it. But uh, it's quite simply, you click on the app registration and click on new registration. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a name. I'm gonna leave it at the default. Uh, 
um, which is the, that it can only be used in this single tenant. And I'm actually going to cheat here in that uh, at, at the bottom it's asking for a redirect URI. Um, this value is provided to you by the connector when you create it. I already know what mine's going to be, so I'm going to copy and paste it in. But I will show you where that um, is stored and uh, it will allow you to add it in yourself if you're not at that stage. So we're going to go ahead and register and uh, that opens up our brand new app registration nice and quickly and uh, one of the first things we need to make note of for our custom connector is our client id and our tenant id so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to copy that to my clipboard and save that in a wee notepad for later and similarly with the tenant id i'm going to copy that and paste that for later and the next part of the the puzzle is to create a client secret so clicking on certificates and secrets this forms part of the authentication process for our custom connector if i go ahead and click on that i can give it a name again and you can set an expiry date so i'll go ahead and click on add <clears throat> and you can see now that we have the new client secret here so very much like I copied the client ID and the tenant ID before, I'm going to go ahead and copy that to my clipboard and take a note of that separately in my notepad. Now the thing to note here is if you navigate away from this screen, this um, secret will become obscured. That's it, you can't get it back. So you've got one option from then onwards. If you haven't taken a copy of it, delete it, create a new one. Simple as that. Now, I spoke about the requirement to add a URI. Now, if I went, I went onto the authentication tab here, you'll see I have the redirect URI. That is the URL that I pasted in at the beginning of me creating the app registration. So when it does come to creating the custom connector, if you don't know what the web URI is, you can return back to this authentication tab here and add it in manually. So the final, final piece of the puzzle for our app registration is to give the app some permissions to the Graph API. So by default, we've got the ability to read our own profile. And uh, if you remember earlier, I spoke about the documentation that you can open up. So you can see here that in order to send chat messages to a channel, um, we need to use the channel message send and the group read write all permission. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy that first one. I'm going to return back to my app registration. I'm going to add a permission, choose Microsoft Graph, choose delegated permissions, and paste in that particular permission. So I've ticked that, jump back onto the documentation, get my uh, other permission, paste that in, select it, and hit add. And you'll see now we've got the three permissions, the original user one, and then the two additional ones that are required for this custom connector or for this API call we're going to use. And the final, final bit is just to make sure that we have granted admin consent for everyone on our, on our tenant here. So there we go. That's that all set up. So that is the app registration done on Azure AD. So I'm going to jump into Power Automate and from here on the left hand side, I'm going to expand data. I'm going to go into custom connectors and here you'll see an example of three connectors that I've created previously. I'm going to jump into the new custom creator, uh, custom connector, sorry, and uh, go and add in um, a name for our, for our new connector. So Graph API demo in my, my situation. Um, and this is where, where you can personalize your connector so that you can recognize it across the platform. So I'm going to go ahead and add a, an image so it's recognizable to me and give it a quick uh, description and then provide the two parameters that we've got here. So the first of which, because I'm using the Graph API, you can see the way that they've <coughs> formatted the example. No need for the HTTP or S, 
Uh, I just paste in the URL there, graph.microsoft.com, and I'm gonna keep the base URL just as a single forward slash because all the API calls are returned or accessed right after this host address that we have here. Moving on to security, this is where hopefully if you've taken a copy of your client ID and tenant ID and also your client secret, <clears throat> we'll be able to complete this without any problems. So I'm going to pick OAuth2 and then the uh, important thing to do here is to change it to Azure Active Directory. So the identity provider needs to be Azure Active Directory. And this is where we can align the various things that we copied earlier into the, the settings here. So first of all, I'm going to paste the client ID. I'm then going to grab my client secret. There we go. The login URL, as you can see there, is login.windows.net. The tenant ID, again, is one of the GUIDs that I should have copied earlier when I did my app registration. So there's our tenant ID. And then the resource ID, again, is where the API sits. So it's on graph.microsoft.com, but this time to include the full HTTPS at the beginning of the URL. And I believe this scope, I'm going to leave it as it is, but I believe this allows you to limit the various permissions that have been granted. So if you've, if you've granted multiple permissions to um, your app, you can list your permissions here. Might be wrong, but I'm going to leave this as it is because I know that it will work. And if you remember, I spoke about having um, a need to copy a URI. Well, this is it here, the, the redirect. This, this allows your graph API to return the um, authentication to this uh, app registration. Um, if I move on to definition and maybe back into security. No, I don't get to see it. Where do I see it? Is it edit? Somewhere you actually get to physically see this URI. Maybe it's once I've created. So we'll go ahead and just create that connector. We've only done the general and the security at this point. But just to show you that I'm not lying to you. We've created it. It's saving it. There we go. So there's the URL that I was talking about. Global.consent.azure.apm.net slash redirect. If I jump back into my graph API and look at that authentication tab, you can see, there we go, that's that's the, the URL that we're looking for. And so if you haven't previously populated this, you can return back to authentication and chuck in your URL in case it's any different. So the next part is to define the uh, action that we're going to create. So you can define triggers um, and I'm sure you can get a lot more complex, but in my particular example, I'm going to define my new action. So I'm going to jump on to new action here and as per everything, you need to provide a summary. So we're going to call this post, uh, post to channel. I'm going to call this version two and we can put in a description and I'm just going to give the operation ID the same name as the summary. And then when it comes to visibility, this is all about how easy it is to find your new action within your Cloudflow. So by making it important, it will be visible to um, everyone on Power Automate. Now, we need to go and import an example. So if I click on the plus here, and this is where you'll need to refer back to your Graph Explorer to remind yourself of the various settings. So if I jump onto the graph here, you can see first of all that we are posting to this endpoint. So back to this connection, we are posting. Then we need to find the URL. So the important thing to notice here is in this particular example, I've already got the uh, channel and the team populated with a, with a GUID. I'm wanting the example with the parameters in the curly brackets. So if I just navigate back to this particular API call, send channel message, I can copy that endpoint here, and then I can paste that in 
as my URL. And you can see here we've got these two variables. And that's key because it will allow us to then include these as parameters when we create the custom um, connector. And then for me, from my first attempt, I populated the, the body. So again, if we look back at this Graph API Explorer, we're looking for an example of the, of the body that includes all the various uh, parameters that we're looking to pass. And in this case, this is what I'm looking to pass, the one that includes the attachment and uh, the content is HTML. And back into my connector, paste that in. And then all we're gonna do is hit the import. So there we go. Because we have the team ID and the channel ID in the curly brackets, we now have these two path parameters that are created and they'll be available dynamically within our new action within Power Automate. And the body, likewise, it will have interpreted that JSON um, string that we provide or JSON uh, object that we provided and allow us to pass parameters to that new action. And really, that's all there is to it. So if we go into the, the test now, um, the first thing I need to do is to connect using my credentials I'm looking to use on this new um, connector. So I'm going to go ahead and just select my default account there. There we go, that's us logged in. I'm going to uh, update the connector because I realise I've not yet saved it. And we'll just wait for that to save. Okay, and here we have an example of the various parameters that we can pass to our new connector for this post to channel uh, action that we've created. So I'm just going to switch on the raw body and uh, I can paste in that uh, JSON object that we had from it earlier. Um, and I'm just going to change the content here just to say here is our test. And I'm also, I also need to provide the team ID and the channel ID. So I'm just going to, I'll show you how, how you can grab that from your own team just to make things easier. So you can go into your Microsoft team, you can go to get link to team. Uh, and, and within this, if I just copy and paste it, paste it into the address bar here, you can see here I've got the group ID. So I can copy that and uh, paste that in there that's the team ID and then I need to get the channel ID which is here control C and back in here there we go hopefully that's the right around uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and test the operation to so just remind ourselves if we go back onto here we have the message that I sent from the earlier graph API call we're now going to do this from our custom connector hit the test button We've got the green tick back into our team. Here is our test. So there we go. We have now posted a message via the test in the custom connector. So I go ahead and close that. The final piece of the demo is just to show you this new action in use in Power Automate. So I've got a link here to create an instant flow. It's a cheeky little shortcut. And uh, what I need to do is select new step go into my custom and you'll see here I have my graph API demo. If I select that, I have the single action, which is for the graph API demo. And as before, I can supply the channel ID and such like. So let's see if I can, have I got what I got here? I've got the channel ID. If I go and grab the group, ID from here, which is of course the, the, the team ID, the content type. This is where it gets really complicated. I'm going to cheat. Content type was HTML. The content, here we go. And when it comes to attachments, I am going to, can I change that into text? I can, there we go. I'll just copy that whole array, that's easier. And put it into text mode, paste that in, hit the save button, and hopefully we will get 
a message on our channel. Please look at the weekly sales figures attached as of. Is it going to save? It has. Let's go ahead and test. It's run successfully. And here we go. Please look at the, the weekly sales figures as of the 26th of June. And if I click on that link, it will open our Excel document. So there we go. We have successfully created a custom connector. We have created an app registration on Azure, and we've then used that new action within Power Automate. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, as before, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and uh, hope to see you again sometime soon. Thank you very much for watching.